In the last year, 18,000 new species were named and identified. That's around the world. One of them is the Cape Melville leaf-tailed gecko. The gecko was discovered by Dr. Conrad Hoskin from James Cook University. Conrad, thanks for joining Bush Telegraph. Yeah, hi, thank you. How did you track this gecko down? Uh, well, I've been wanting to go to Cape Melville for a long time. Um, Cape Melville's up north of Cooktown. It's up on Cape York, but it sits um, as this isolated mountain range over by the coast. And I went there years ago um, in the early 2000s, probably over 10 years ago. I went out, you can go through Lakefield on a long dirt road and end up at the base of Cape Melville. And it's an incredible place. Um, you have to sort of see it to really understand what it looks like, but it's these massive boulder fields. So the mountain's basically made of millions of big granite rocks, each rock being like the size of a house, and they're just piled up hundreds of metres high. But standing at the bottom, I could see a little ribbon of rainforest across the top, and I thought, gee, if there's a bit of a plateau of rainforest up there, it would have been so isolated from other mountain ranges that it would be extremely exciting to get into and search and see if there's anything, um, you know, any isolated animals that are new species up there. And then back then I tried to climb up, but it's incredibly hard to get up um, top. But then Last year, um, a National Geographic photographer was, we were chatting about um, places to go in Cape York and I was like, oh, we've got to go to Cape Melville, it's exciting. And we ended up flying in by helicopter and doing a, a five-day survey up there and um, found uh, several, uh, now over five new species of vertebrates up the top. So it turned out to be a bit of a, a lost world up top. It, it must be cat-free then if you've got all those new discoveries to be made. I, yeah, I don't know that cats could get up there. These boulder fields are incredible. So when you climb up over them, it's just... You know, if you drop something, it just goes down and down and down. It just kind of disappears. feels like it's disappearing into the centre of the earth. But So this plateau of rainforest at the top is basically completely surrounded by massive boulder fields that are just exposed. But the plateau of rainforest turned out to be pretty big. And when you're up there, you're at, most of the time you're actually walking on earth in a decent rainforest. And, you know, a good proportion of the reptiles and frogs we were seeing were turned out to be new species. So this place has just been so isolated and independently evolving for millions of years that basically any, most of the things that are restricted to rainforest up there have become their own species. So we got the, the new gecko, the Cape Melville leaf tail gecko, which was the highlight just because yeah. it's big and spectacular. Now it's got a scientific name as well, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, Saltureus eximius. And um, so Saltureus is the genus of those leaf tail geckos. And eximius means, I named it that because it means, um, you know, exceptional or exquisite, just because it's such a bizarre and spectacular animal. I, I just gave it something you know, quite dramatic like that. It really yeah. looks like someone, it looks like a car backed over its tail and its tail was made yeah. out of pl Play-Doh and it's just squashed. It's um, it's quite an incredible looking looking uh, creature. I guess that's why it was named, I don't think I mentioned it, it was named in the top 10 discoveries of 2014 by the International Institute for Species Exploration, 2013, I, I should say. So you knew as soon as you saw it that you were onto something pretty special, did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, from the second I saw it. Um, yeah, we were coming out of a, up off the boulder fields and into a rainforest gully at night and I could see eye shine. So just like if a cat was in front of your headlights, it's got bright eye shine. A gecko is not bright like that, but you still, off like a head torch, you get a little dull red glow. And there's some other geckos up there, but when I was coming up the gorge, up this gully, I could see it and I thought, gee, that looks like a leaf tail <laughs> off the side of that tree. Mm. And I clambered, clamped, uh, clambered up through the rocks and went around the tree and there was just this spectacular, obviously distinct, um, yeah, I knew the second I saw it, it was new. It's, it's big it's sort of 20 centimeters long it's got long spindly legs big huge eyes and that um quite fabulous flared flamboyant tail that you were mentioning before yeah i'm not sure i did it justice with that description so we'll make sure there's some photos up on our on our website very yeah, soon it the like website. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's perfectly camouflaged too like against a rock it's spectacular the camouflage you're lucky for eye shine otherwise you'd just so that that's the only way you'll spot it is it the the eye shine yeah, really, because, um, yeah, if you really scrutinised, if you knew one was there and you scrutinised the rock surface, you could find it. But, you, you know, it's near impossible to find if you don't use eye shine. Mm. So yeah. um, is that the highlight of your career to date? I think the, um, yes, I'd say the whole discovering that whole group of new species up there. So the leaf tail was just one. We got a new frog and several new lizards as well, skinks, um, you know, which to your listeners are those sort of more shiny lizards that run around in the day in your garden, that kind of thing. So we got the fact that this place is basically just been sitting there doing its own thing and to be able to walk into a place in Australia where you find all these new species. I mean, I think that will ultimately be the highlight of my career. Yeah, it's it extremely exciting just to have a place that's just been completely undiscovered like that. Mm. Uh, do you feel there's, or how important is it that we have these stories of rediscovery or discovery um, at a time when so often the national discussion is around extinction like we were having just earlier? Mm. 
I think it's it's extremely exciting, and I, I think that's one thing. The um, you know how exactly those the that New York um, University decides which is the or that international panel decides which is the top ten new species. I mean, it's hard to know exactly how they go about that. You can see they've selected various things across the animal world, mm. but the an incredible clear shelled snail that got my attention. Yeah, yeah, mm. and well, ranges from everything from that onlinguito, that mammal up in the Ecuadorian highlands, through to like a yellow, bright yellow fungus, something like that. But what that list does is it just highlights to people that even in this day and age of this, you know, uh, issue with extinction and everything like that, the world's still a big and exciting enough place that we still find these incredible, um, you know, lots of new species and including quite big um, new things like these vertebrates. So I think it's a, yeah, it is a source of optimism and, um, yeah, it just shows us how much we, we still don't know about the earth and how much we need to work to um, maintain the diversity, look after the diversity that's out there. But would it be fair to say that discoveries like this are relatively rare in Australia? They tend to be on, on other continents? Yeah, I mean, in terms of vertebrates, for sure. So if you wanted to find new species of vertebrates, you'd go to the north, to New Guinea. It's much, it's remote, it's very poorly explored. You can find quite easily um, lots of vertebrates, uh, frogs and lizards and things still get discovered there. But in Australia, we still have a um, very active um, group of taxonomists who, who study various groups, and lots of new species are described, but there's not that many new vertebrates that get found, and particularly not that many new vertebrates in Australia that are out and out, just, you know, field discoveries. You know, as we look at populations of something that's quite widespread, for example, with more data, we might realise that we've really been calling two species one and, and they might get split. But um, we don't get that many um, just out and out sort of field discoveries of vertebrates anyway in Australia anymore. Like this still one? Quite a, like, yeah, still yeah. quite a few invertebrates and um, various other really cool things get discovered every year, lots of spiders and all those those things which are equally interesting in their own way, yeah. It, it, you touch on spiders there. Is the Cape Melville leaf-tailed gecko safe enough? Is it to have uh, any... Yeah, I think it's... Yeah? it's um, we, For it's human contact, I mean. Yeah, it's very, um, very remote and um, it's protected by this incredible uh, sort of fortress walls of Cape Melville, so it's not likely to get too many visitors. Um, yeah, it's, it's protected completely within Cape Mel Melville National Park, which is a good thing. Um, I guess the thing we've noticed with the gecko, though, is that last year I did three trips to Cape Melville and I looked in a lot of habitat that seemed really good for them, but we still have only found it at this one exact site. So despite the fact that you can walk a kilometre off in a different direction on the top of Cape Melville and get to very similar looking habitat that looks ideal for the gecko, there's other species of, of gecko and lizards there, but we've still only found the, um, the leaf-tailed gecko at this one site and we've not found more than 10 individuals. So. I really don't have a good feel yet for the population size or just, but it could be extremely restricted. Mm, well, you've uh, described an amazing discovery in a, in a fantastic landscape as well. Congratulations on it, uh, Conrad. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Conrad Hoskin from James Cook University. I've just retweeted a picture of that, uh, that gecko. That